weed and the marijuana industry. Uh, thank you so much. I'm excited to do this with you. Thank you. It's thank a lot you. of fun. So I got a couple of questions here. Cool. So you are in the medical industry and you have been for quite a while. So tell me a little bit about yourself and like what you do. Um, cool. Uh, I'm a caregiver um, underneath the medical mar- medical marijuana law. Um, I grow. Uh, I process cannabis. That means uh, turn it into concentrates, uh, extracts, uh, things like hash, Cool. Um, shatter stuff like that. So, what is hash? Um, well, hash itself is the the resin of the plant. Okay. Um, and typically, you make it uh, with ice cold water. Oh. Um, and your trim, and you mix the two together. Uh, you strain it, uh, then you scrape it, and okay. then you put it on uh, a cheesecloth um, or or some kind of uh, um, Pyrex okay. glass. Let it dry. Um, then it becomes hash, and you oh. smoke it about twenty four to forty eight hours. Nice. So, yeah. I never really knew what hash was. Like I, I kind of know a little bit about all of them, but hash was always the one that was like. Yeah, I mean hash is. I mean, when you say hash is kind of it's kind of generic. Okay. Um, but there's different types of hash. Okay. Um, like if you're trimming, um, and on your gloves, some of the resin gets mm-hmm. stuck on your gloves. You can peel that off. Uh, you can put it in a freezer. You can let it cure for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, and that's called finger hash. Okay. Um, I always so, just thought that was like, like the what's it called, the keef, but yeah, keef. Uh, that's called um, dry sift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's uh, that that wow. is a form. Uh, that's more like loose hash. Okay. Um, and most times you can get keef if you have a grinder and you have a screen and you right. grind it and it falls through. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's considered um, sift oh. or keef or dry hash. Okay, so how do you yeah. spell keef? Uh, keef K E I F K E I F. I always did I E. Yeah? But I'm just terrible, so. Okay, okay, okay. It's all good. I didn't know if there's like a really like correct way of spelling it, but I'm probably wrong. I think we make up a lot of this as we go. Yeah. So. All right, well, cool. <laughs> I like that. Um, so you were in the medical industry and everything, and now weed is recreationally legal in Michigan. How does that affect you? Um, it does in a couple ways. Um, underneath the medical law, um, you can grow up to 72 plants. Okay. Um, you can possess two and a half ounces. Mm-hmm. Um, and also underneath the medical law, you can possess two and a half ounces for each of your patients. Oh, okay. Up to five patients total. Okay. So for so what that means is uh, 2.5 um, times six is 15 ounces. So I can legally carry 15 ounces underneath the medical marijuana law. Right. Um, now when the adult use law passed, um, if you had a card or not, you can carry 2.5 ounces. You just can't carry 2.5 ounces for you know all your friends. Or right. So like since that. you have the med license, you're still allowed to carry that larger amount, right? Yeah, and you kind of um, it's kind of it's a gray area now okay. where some people are thinking, um, well, hey, I have my 72 plants. Mm-hmm. Now can I grow an extra 12? Oh. Um, oh. But it's kind of like, well, do you want to dibble dabble in both? Or you, I think it's right now it's kind of best to kind of pick one or the other. Okay. Um, and I'm not looking to make case law to see if. Uh, no. <laughs> if <laughs> you, you don't want to be the, the one to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can grow the extra toll. But yeah, some people are, are trying to commingle the two. For example, you grow your 72 in one room. Yeah. Um, then you grow another 12 and you call that underneath the adult use. Okay. Um, that is definitely up in the air. I would not recommend it. Of course, I'm not an attorney. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you kind of want to pick one or the other so underneath the adult use if my car did expire um i can grow 12 plants right right and i can possess 2.5 ounces um but also um underneath the adult use law i can carry 10 ounces um Mm -hmm. in my house or i can have it in a locked container right in my own private residence um so that's 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 a good thing to yeah, that, you know. that's perfect because that's one of my questions actually is, so you're allowed to grow 12 plants and if you harvest all of them at once, you're probably going to have more than 10 ounces. So what do you do with that at that point? Um, is that like... Well, no, no. That Well, that unfortunately, because of uh, the way that um, the court cases have come down, kind of just when Shooty was in governor, uh, uh, glad he's gone, by glad the way. Glad he's gone. <laughs> but... Uh, well, they, they really poked a lot of holes in the Medical Marijuana uh, Act. Um, and there is a hole right now still existing to where, for that question, if I grow 72 plants and say I got an ounce of plant, mm-hmm. that's 72 ounces. Yeah. And I can only technically have 15 ounces. Right. So I got 72, I can only have 15. What do you do? Um, in the past, you call that gap overages. 
Okay. Um, and you can kind of say, well, that's my overages, and um, you can try to store it. But there's been court cases that come down and said that you can't have overages, so you're right. supposed to just destroy it. Um, destroy it? Not even, like, give it away for free? Um, they tell you to destroy <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, um, unless... It's one of your patients. Okay. Um, if you if you're because there's case law that if I'm a caregiver, I'm only supposed to do transactions with my five patients. Okay. So if you wasn't if you were not one of my five patients and I gave you some of my that's still oranges, illegal. that technically could be that will um, I won't say illegal. Um, okay. I, I would say, I know it's kind of this yeah. is this, this a whole complex thing, um, but I would say that you will not be immune from arrest. I mean, okay. You could get arrested, but however there's another affirmative defense that you can have to explain mm -hmm. why you kind of okay. gave that. But you may not want to go through that downing process of having to explain that. So. All right. So if you're going to do the 12 plants, you probably want to do a cycle. Don't harvest all at once. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But again, I mean, even if you did the 12, it's hard to gauge how much you're going right. to yield. So Especially at some if point. You're like starting out. Like. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are some things that need to get cleared up through legislation mm -hmm. um, to if you did harvest more than what you're supposed to. I still should be protected from arrest because right. it's mine. Um, I shouldn't have to get arrested and then prove myself that right. it wasn't a reasonable amount for me. Um, a bunch of thousand dollars, you know, a couple thousand dollars later. So, right. so as of right now, you can have it. You just will not be immune from arrest. Okay, that you could get arrested, but it, this doesn't mean it's over. You yeah. just have to be able to defend yourself, and you have to explain that my X amount of overages is a reasonable amount mm -hmm. for me to have a uninterrupted supply. Okay. Um, I also have to prove that I have my card. Right. And I also have to prove that it's for medical use. Right. Um, but to do that, it's not a simple, it's not like law and order where one yeah. day you're here and the next day, you know, <laughs> yeah, you it just prove it. Time. You got to hire an attorney, you got to go through court, they're going to um, send motions. So five to $10,000 later, you can get the case dismissed, mm -hmm. um, but no one wants to go through that. No one should have to go through right. that if you just have a good harvest. Yeah, so right. Like it's, and it's really hard to gauge at that point. Like you don't know how much you're going to get until it's in front of you. Yeah, and and uh, you want to have a consistent supply. So yeah. say you did have a harvest, but then um, there's times it's, it's hard to grow consistent quality cannabis. So mm -hmm. if your next harvest was bad, at least you had some backup. Right. Okay. okay, so so th so those are the reasons why I believe that legislation we need to step in to clarify underneath the medical because not everybody's going to be underneath the dog. Yeah, some people are going to function underneath just medical. Right. Um, but there's some things underneath medical that uh, the previous uh, governor and attorney general um, didn't really uh, promote so well. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're glad to have Gretchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gretchen went more all the way. <laughs> Um, so what advice would you have for people who are trying to get into the legal recreational marijuana industry? Ooh, uh, that, nice throw. <laughs> <laughs> um, that advice would depends on, um, I guess, decide what you're looking to do. Okay. Um, whether if you're looking to grow, okay, focus on growing. Uh, like what is your end goal? Okay. You want to start with the end in mind. If you're, if you're someone who wants to vaporize cartridges, Mm -hmm. um, to to consume or your patients um, or even you personally uh, wants to vaporize cartridges, then that changes how you start off. Oh, okay. Um, and so I kind of you want to start off with the end in mind. So what is it you're looking to do? Um, or if it's just for just therapy, I mean, you just want to grow, just to have a garden, just right. to, you know, just to grow in it and kind of dibble and dabble. Um, I'll say, well, first think about what the end looks like. Um, and then from there, um, you want to start small. Okay. Um, if you're looking to to grow for the first time, I mean, just just get one plant. Right. You know, you, you you don't have to. Spend... You don't have to do all of them just because you can. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Or spend twenty to fifty to a hundred thousand dollars on some kind of high tech, uh, state of the art grow. Right. Um, you just get like a, a grow tent for uh, two hundred okay. bucks on Amazon or something like that. Oh, okay. And then and then get like a some kind of light that you think you want to to actually research and, and grow with. And just get you know a couple clones or a couple seeds and grow that. Okay. Um, and yeah. then see if they still live. <laughs> <laughs> and then if they don't, just try again. Yeah, you know maybe you should call a consultant. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Well, cool. Um, um. So this was something that was weird in the in the law. Um, 
for recreational marijuana, you can carry like two and a half ounces on you, but it has to be sealed in the trunk of your car. So like, what does sealed mean? Um, well, they actually, no, nah, I don't want to clarify that. So, yeah, so, um, underneath, in your the, opinion. underneath the medical, um, marijuana act, um, a couple years ago in the lame duck session, um, the legislature made some rule that if you had marijuana in your car or in your possession, it needed to be in a locked and closed mm-hmm. container in your trunk. Um, but that has been thrown out. Okay. Through court cases. Okay. Um, it was challenged and it was unconstitutional to do that because it's not even written in the law. Like, unless you knew of that rule, right. like, how would you even know about yeah. that? Um, so you can actually have it um, loosely um, okay. in the car. However, um, for it to be, the packaging for it to be sealed, um, that's more of the state commercial licensing. Okay. Um, to where if the retail outlets, if they have to sell the product, it has to be childproof. Okay. Um, so there's childproof, childproof. packaging. Right. Um, but for you yourself, if you're possessing it, you know, if you had it in a Ziploc bag, I mean, that's That's your, what I was wondering because uh, like, we were traveling, uh, my boyfriend and I were traveling and we, we rolled a blunt and we put it in an envelope and like yeah. sealed the envelope shut. We're like, it's sealed. And then we like wrote over the seal to like show that it wasn't broken. Yeah. We're like, are we good? Like we had no idea. No, I didn't see, uh, I mean, and if, I didn't see in the, underneath the adult use law, um, uh, and, and I could be wrong, yeah. but I didn't see where it has to be sealed. I, I do. I read it in articles, but I can't remember reading it in the proposal. Okay. So. I mean, in, in the proposal, you can have your two and a half ounces right. on you. Um, but if you have more than that, it needs to be in a locked. Oh, okay. Um, so if you had your 10 ounces, so you, you have 10 ounces, mm-hmm. um, you have two and a half ounces out and about, then you can have another 10 ounces, say, in like your gun safe. Okay. Um, or in some locked room. Right. Um, that is a way from common public um, people can come in or friends can actually get access to it. it has to be locked away yeah so that is something more in your private residence okay not necessarily when you actually are driving all right um but it doesn't hurt to have it locked away and, right you know, yeah, and, it's and always put in a trunk safe. yeah 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 we don't want to give anyone any more uh, probable cause right even though now that it's legalized i believe probable cause is dead i think so yeah yeah you have the right to not possess I have the, it it's yeah. just like alcohol in the back yeah like it just you know but the path of least, least resistance, let's not be the first case. Let's not be the first case, <laughs> yeah. To see uh, if you can have it out and open. But it's not either, not about right or wrong, but what is best, mm-hmm. um, what is smarter, yeah, um, and, and, and what's more responsible. So, yeah, if you do have children and you have kids, you want something to be in a childproof container. Right. Um, but is it illegal that it wasn't in a sealed container? No. No. Um, but it's probably uh, better okay. uh, to have it sealed. Cool. Yeah. So uh, what are you most excited about recreational weed being legal? Like, what makes you the most excited? Like, when it passed, what were you like, yes, finally? You know, to me, uh, what it all meant, really. I mean, I understand that there's uh, there's some friction in, in regards to how it was written. It was written for more big business, uh, mm-hmm. the, the little guys, the little people, um, those who have been disproportionately affected by this war mm-hmm. on drugs the most. They're kind of being left out um, of the upside of the economic opportunity. Right. Um, I get that. Uh, but first and foremost, what answers the question, what I'm excited about is, you know, the simple fact that, you know, people are just not going to be arrested, persecuted, assessed, um, forfeited for small amounts of possessing, consuming, and growing marijuana. Right. That in itself is the victory. Um, and then we grow from there. Um, through legislation, we can yeah. make um, changes um, to the law to reflect what, what we believe. You know, mm-hmm. There should be minority inclusion. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, people of a low um, economic um, backgrounds or, or classes, per se. I don't really like classes. Yeah. yeah but um, um, or, or income brackets. Um, they should be able to have some type of incentives to get involved as well, mm-hmm. so it can help them provide for their basic needs. So, right. but those things happen um, just like how this as this same movement happened as a as a grassroots movement. Right. People got together and decided to um, make what they believed a process and 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 a law. So, but I, I'm I'm very excited the fact that 
if I just have two and a half ounces on me or um, a young adult, um, a young black man, a young um, white girl has weed on them. Um, well, young meaning 21 years 21 age or older. older. Yeah. But still, if you're a young adult and you have that, you're not going to have something on your record that's going to just taint mm-hmm. you for the rest of your life. For a plant. Yeah, for a plant. So that that is very exciting. And the fact that um, probable cause. I mean, if you smell weed, I mean... They, it's no longer, yeah. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to kick in your door anymore, you right. know, get these uh, iffy warrants um, or, you know, search your car, tear it up, up and down. So, yeah, yeah so that's that's a very cool, cool thing. All right, well, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Can't wait to do this again next week. Cool, cool. All right, see you guys later. Peace.